You are in assist, need of assistance, over. One hundred and eleven years ago, ships that had wireless very often only carried one operator. The main duties were to convey passengers' messages to and from shore stations which could be translated into telegraphs. During quiet times, operators on different ships gossiped with one another exchanged jokes and profanities. There was no system of channels to use for any particular purpose. They would search for a channel and when they found something of interest they would listen and then join in. Operators often knew each other as colleagues and friends. They chatted informally with abbreviations not unlike what we do today on social media. They often use shocking language in a jovial way. Hundreds of onshore amateurs known as tin can operators would also be listening in and would cut in with their own comments. They were told to shut up and go away. On April the 14th, 1912, a certain passenger liner was en route to New York City for her maiden voyage. The wireless operator was weighed down with sending a mountain of passengers' messages. At 11pm he was busy transmitting when the operator of another ship cut in. He told his friend that they were stopped and surrounded by ice. The Titanic operator said, Shut up, shut up, I'm busy. So the California's operator turned off his set and went to bed. By 2.20 a.m. more than 1,500 passengers and crew from the Titanic had perished, including Leonardo da Cappuccino. There's a new day that will come again tomorrow There's a new day to wash away the pain Fast forward the 111 years and if today's VHF rules and regulations had applied in 1912 then at least six of the VHF Ten Commandments would have been broken and laws broken, resulting in fines of up to £5,000 and six months jail sentences. Do not shut down a radio telegraph before finishing all operations resulting from distress, urgency or safety calls. You can't really be telling people to shut up and to go away or go to hell, which was the expression often used. Do not broadcast other than distress messages. And you certainly shouldn't be cutting in on channel 16, which is reserved for distress calls. Do not make unnecessary transmissions. VHF isn't there to organise your social life over the airways. Do not transmit profane, indecent or obscene language.
The language used on that early equipment reminds me of my brief spell lorry driving and listening to CB radio where every other word was a bit wholesome. Do not use unauthorised frequencies. Back then, none of the channels were allocated, so it was a free-for-all. Do not transmit messages to be received ashore other than those at uh, licensed coast radio stations. And all those amateur tin can operators would have been prosecuted. You need two licenses to use VHF, you need a ship's license, and you need an operator's license. It is forbidden to use a marine VHF radio ashore and to cut in or interfere with any of the transmissions. And when you see what happened to the Titanic, you can understand why. This is my standard Horizon HX300 portable VHF radio, which I intend to use on the Swamp Duck and also when I'm out kayaking. Now to uh, power the radio you have to press and hold this button at the bottom centre of the keypad there. A very recognisable symbol. And on this radio there is a separate volume control on the top right hand side of the panel. So in order to adjust the speaker volume you press the vol key which makes the volume indicator blink on the screen and then press the arrow keys in the centre up or down. Now I can't demonstrate this on this VHF radio as I'm not on water and I haven't received my operator's licence yet. It's still in the post. But I can demonstrate using this UHF PMR radio which I also use on the boat. And that has a on off button almost in the same place. So you just press that and hold it and the radio it comes on. And again it has a volume control up and down. It does get quite loud but you do need do need it quite loud at times especially when you're uh, operating a lock and the engines running sometimes you need it on a high volume on the VHF radio there is also a squelch button just here where the volume is so if I press the squelch button followed by the up and down buttons it will reduce or increase the sensitivity of the receiver so in order to set the right level, you turn up the squelch to the point where static atmospheric noise or like a crackling sound stops. And that's the correct level to have the radio set at. On this portable VHF radio, there is also a transmitter power button. The maximum power of this radio is 5 watts but there is also a 1 watt power facility which helps to preserve the battery power and it's here on the bottom left of the panel. There is an equivalent button on this radio the PMR but its maximum output is only 0.5 watts so you can see the difference in the power. The up and down buttons, they on their own, they will select the channels which are shown on the display. So there's the channel selector on this one and it's uh, selecting the different channels three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It only has eight channels altogether on this particular one. Channel 16 is the channel that we need to monitor, so it's like a home channel if you like, 
and that can be quickly accessed with this button here on the top left of the panel. And then the PTT pressed press to talk button is on the side here and this is uh, most important. You place your mouth about an inch from the microphone hole which is there and you speak in a normal voice whilst you're pressing the PTT button. You then release to listen. So it's PTT to talk and then release to listen to an incoming message. People are encouraged to monitor channel 16. There is a jaw watch feature on most radios which means you could monitor channel 16 and perhaps 74 which is the most common on the inland waterways. This is the procedure for making a routine VHF call to a River Trent lock keeper. Cromwell lock control, Cromwell lock control, Cromwell lock control. This is motorboat Swamp Duck on channel 74 over. It's important to make numbers clear so you would also say 74. Cromwell Lock Control, this is Swamp Duck. I am an 18 foot motor cruiser, about half a kilometre south of your lock, and would like permission to enter over. At this point, you would release the press to talk button so that you can listen. Cromwell Lock Control, this is Swamp Duck, standing by, out. That whole procedure only took 48.5 seconds, probably a lot quicker than using a mobile phone. If you didn't know the channel number, you could start on channel 16 and the lock keepers would advise you which channel to change to. VHF procedural words and phrases owe their origin to those early Morse code radio telegraphy sets and began being developed more than 160 years ago. Radio words like out go back to Morse code. It was known as AR and it simply meant end of message. Other phrases include uh, this is, which you then follow by some form of identification. Over, you, you finish speaking but you are expecting a reply. Say again, you need the message repeating. Say again, you need the message repeating. I spell, so you use the NATO phonetic alphabet to spell the, the word. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, India, Juliet, Kilo, Lima, Mike, November, Oscar, Papa, Quebec, Romeo, Sierra, Tango, Uniform, Victor, Whiskey, X-Ray, Yankee, Zulu. Whenever I go out in the car, I always look at the registration of the vehicle in front and try and practice using the phonetic alphabet. I just have to keep practicing. <laughs> VHF radio began on the 2nd of May 1955 in order to have a radio service that was free from interference. The purpose of having marine VHF radio is to be able to communicate distress calls and listen out for distress calls from other vessels. A distress situation is defined as something whereby a vessel or a person is in imminent danger. So it could be that a, a boat is sinking 
or it could be that there's a, a person overboard and the people looking out have lost sight of them. So those would be two very distressful situations where you would want to make a mayday call. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is Swamp Duck, Swamp Duck. Registration 270097. 270097. This is Swamp Duck. 270097. I am on the River Trent, about half a kilometre north of West Stockworth Lock. I am sinking. I need immediate assistance. There is one person and one canine aboard. I am a cabin cruiser with a blue deck and a white hull. Over. VHF radio is also to prevent distress situations. So it could be a weather warning or it could be boats contacting one another warning of something floating in the water that could cause damage if you hit it. You could find yourself in a situation where it isn't necessary to make a distress call because there isn't imminent danger to the boat or to uh, people but it may be something like a breakdown in which case you would make an urgency call. You would make that urgency call on channel 16 Pan pan, pan pan, pan pan. At this point you need to decide who your message is addressed to. It could be to anybody, so it would be all stations, all stations, all stations. And basically that's anybody who is nearby and listening. Or it could be more specific than that. It could be if you are on coastal waters, it could be to a local coast guard. This is Swamp Duck. Swamp Duck, Swamp Duck, Registration Tango 270097, Tango 270097, this is Swamp Duck, Tango 270097, I am about half a kilometre north of West Stockwith Lock and I am adrift, I have no engine. I need a tow. There are two people on board. I am an 18 foot motorboat. I have a blue deck and a white hull. Over. VHF radio is also used by authorised personnel on land who may wish to communicate some information to boaters. Security, security, security. All ships, all ships, all ships. This is Cromwell Lock Control. This is Cromwell Lock Control. This is Cromwell Lock Control. The lock gates have failed. Boats to moor outside the lock. Listen on channel 74. Out. There is a purpose to VHF radio on places like the Tidal Trent. If other boaters are using it, so if you get into difficulties, you can communicate with them and hopefully some boater may come to your aid. You could of course use a mobile phone, provided you know who to ring. So you would need the number of the boaters round about or you would need the number of local CRT staff. Otherwise you'd have no choice but to contact the fire and rescue service and that might take some time to organise where a quick call on your VHF radio to a fellow boater might produce a more immediate response.
This video has been based on my preparation for obtaining a VHF license and is based on the RYA handbook. I've only covered the main points that are relevant to me, my boat and my cruising plans, but I hope I have encouraged you if you're thinking of adding a VHF radio to your boat. Today I have come to Staunton Harold and to the Staunton Harold Sailing Club for the second of my two-day VHF classroom course. The course lasts for eight hours plus time to take the exam. Remember you need two licenses for a VHF radio. You need a ship's license, which I already have, and you need an operator's license, which I hope to have by the end of today. The ship radio license is free from Ofcom and lasts for 10 years. The operator's license lasts a lifetime and is awarded on the successful completion of the course and the exam. So here we go, wish me luck. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. That's the end of my VHF radio course and uh, exam and uh, I'll let you know how I get on in a future video. So from uh, Staunton Harold Yacht Club, thank you very much for watching and do take care.